Hi, in this tutorial we're just going to go over the Friedel Crafts acylation reaction or acylation reaction, depending on how you pronounce it. So this is an acyl group. An acyl group is basically a, um, doesn't have to have the chloride there. It's basically this group here, okay? And this can be anything afterwards. Um, acetal is very similar to the acyl group, and that's um, a special case where the R group is a CH3, that's called an acetal group. Okay, so in the Friedel Crafts acylation reaction, it's basically uh, very, very similar to the alkylation reaction. You use a, a Lewis acid, in this case here, I'll just drag this across because I drew that earlier. We've got aluminium chloride. Again, just like Friedel Crafts alkylation reaction, it needs to be anhydrous. You can't have any water present. If you remember, I spoke about aluminium chloride and iron chloride last time, and they are what's called Lewis acids. And Lewis acids are um, species that like to uh, have more electrons to them. They're, you know, they they're electrophiles basically. They they love uh, reacting with electrons and picking them up. And aluminium and iron are particularly suited to picking up more electrons. Chlorine. Um, being a halogen can can donate some of its electrons because it's got quite a lot of electrons around it um, to donate some of the electrons into these aluminium and iron compounds. So the first step in the Friedel Crafts acylation reaction, actually I will use that there, if we take aluminium chloride, is the formation of what's called an acylium ion. Actually I'll just I'm just going to change the colour of those back because I'm going to use some. I'll change it back to black. Okay, so the first step, if I choose red, get myself a red colour, is some of those extra electrons on chlorine donate into aluminium. And in doing that, if you remember from the last tutorial on uh, alkylation reactions, it doesn't matter if you're not seeing it, that draws the electrons because it's losing electrons. Chlorine is quite greedy and will want to attract more electrons to itself to stabilise it. And in doing that, it drags it from this bond here, making this more positively charged. In effect, it takes some electron density away from that centre. That's a carbon there. So that, yeah, that's another thing as well. These, this carbon, but this point here just means there's a carbon. So it's actually, it actually looks like that. And I recommend you have a look at the. Uh, drawing organic molecules in a tutorial to get a feel for all these different ways of writing structures. So this reacts with the aluminium chloride, the Lewis acid, to form what's called the acylium ion. So that goes to give this. And I'll draw it with the carbon in. Okay, sorry. I'll put the positive charge in the wrong atom then. And AlCl3 with an extra one becomes 4 minus. Okay. And the negative charge is actually on the aluminium there because it's took more electron density. Chlorine's fine, it sorted itself out. Now, what we've got here is this strange looking species called the acylium ion, and the acylium ion. I draw another resonance form. This is called a resonance arrow when we draw a double edit arrow like that. And basically all that I've done there is donated um, some of the electrons there. If I draw if I draw the electron for the other electrons, put these like bunny rabbit ears on. The electrons for oxygen it's got some non bonding electrons here which sit in uh, these orbitals don't actually do anything until it needs to react. So these are valence electrons that just aren't forming bonds basically and they're happy because they're paired up like that. But when electrons are taken away from carbon in this case, these can actually be used to stabilize it. And it's that stabilization that makes this uh, a, a reactive intermediate. It can exist you know, for a defined lifetime. So if I draw the other resonance form, whoops, it seems to be working. Why is that? Oh, because I 
chose white. Okay, so we draw the other resonance form for that. Will be carbon like that plus. Okay, and that's because it's had some of the electrons taken away from it. And all that's happened, if if we reiterate what I've just said, basically, I'll just draw those two two electrons like that. That oxygen just keeps pushing electrons back into that bond, and it forms a triple bond. The shape changes a little bit as well, so you, you see I've drawn that as a linear species, and um, that's just because it, the carbon has to readjust parts of its orbitals in order to um, accept the other electrons. So this this is just something you get used to writing. Now, what does that mean? What is the reactive species here? Now? Because we've got a positive charge on carbon in this one, a positive charge on oxygen in this one. So where is this electron-rich aromatic group going to attack here? Well, if you remember what I said about oxygen, oxygen has donated electrons in here. It's using them in this double bond here. It doesn't actually have anywhere for more electrons to go because it's using all its valence electrons. It would have to go into the next shell, and if you look at electron shells uh, tutorial, you'll see that that would make oxygen quite unstable because it's it's got that octet. You know, remember the, the octet rule we, we did in the other tutorials? It's got a full valence shell, so it doesn't really want to accept any more electrons. But it's carbon that's disguised here as being okay because it's it's borrowing electrons from oxygen. And that borrowing electrons is not quite good enough really because it can actually accept electrons from somewhere else and give oxygen its, its electrons back and that's exactly what happens. So the if you draw the aromatic compound, I'll have to draw it down here now because we've taken it off the page, but if you draw the benzene ring here like this, I'll just use red colour benzene ring can actually attack this species here. I'll just, just get rid of these so it's not misleading us. Go back to my brush. So this can attack carbon there. Okay, like that. Now we could have attacked that. Now I'm going to draw that briefly and then I'll delete it just to show you that you can actually attack both resonance forms. I'll just draw those double bonds a bit better. You can actually draw draw whatever resonance form you want because because if we attack that here now on the carbon still on the carbon those electrons can go back to oxygen like that and that will give us the same compound as it, as attacking here so the resonance form just tells you whereabouts the charges are located and which one's susceptible to being attacked. It's very useful, uh, especially in aromatic chemistry. So this will the overall reaction from this will be a benzene ring that's lost some electrons. Okay, so let's put the let's put the air sound group on here. So it's lost some electrons. It still goes hydrogen on. I've not drawn hydrogen so I'll draw that hydrogen on and I'll draw that one on just where the double bond is but they've all got hydrogens around there as well so I said I'd draw that one didn't I so I'll put that one back on I've just not drawn the other ones for clarity really to make it a bit easier to see I'll just move the page down a bit okay so now we've got this I'll just move that up there you can see so now we've got this um, acyl group on and we've now got a positive charge to sort out because we've lost electrons here. Remember that I talk, talked about a, a gate opening. Imagine this is a gate, a uh, front gate or something, or a door. And that opens up to form this bond. So that bond there was there. And it's opened up oof, like that to react with this species and bind it to this molecule. And in doing that, it's left a gap here. Okay? And that gap is exactly where that positive charge goes. That positive charge is stabilised, but I won't go into that. It's stabilised by the aromatic ring. and So that will put electrons in there, and that charge will distribute around there. But overall, this 
um, aromatic ring, which isn't aromatic at the moment, would like to be aromatic again. And it's got a strong desire to do that. And in doing that, just like the alkylation reactions we did in the other tutorial, it puts the electrons back into that double bond there, and that will give us our new product, which is the acyl product. Okay, like that. And you remember in the Friedel Crafts alkylation reaction, so we've lost it, we lose that proton. So that hydrogen comes off. Again, I'm using protons and hydrogens. Uh, I mean the same thing really. So we've now got our product exactly where we want it to be. This species here, unlike the alkylation product, is now um, all right and it's quite stable because this double bond can actually take electron density out of this aromatic ring. And I'll I'll do some tutorials on um, how you move electrons around and and intermediates and things like that. And um, And things like this, you know. So this acyl species, unlike the um, alkyl species we had in Friedel Crafts alkylation, is actually quite electron deficient in terms of its aromatic content here, and that's because it can lose electrons um, to this carbonyl. So the electrons can come out of the aromatic ring, and what that does, it makes it less reactive. So it's less reactive than the starting material. So it's less reactive than benzene in this case, because we started with benzene, which means we won't get over uh, acyl over acylation products. Remember, in Friedel Crafts reaction, we can get extra uh, byproducts. In this one, uh, we can get byproducts. Of course, we can if we don't do the reaction properly. But uh, it's the product isn't as reactive as the starting material, so that's a bonus. So all we need to do is keep it all nice and, and tidy. So that is the Friedel Crafts acylation reaction. Basically if you take an aromatic, in this case I used benzene, but it could be any aromatic compound that's quite electron rich. React that with an acyl uh, chloride, and this is an acyl chloride group, uh, in the presence of a Lewis acid under anhydrous conditions, using a solvent that's not aromatic, otherwise the solvent will become um, acylated if it's reactive enough and that will give us not an R group there that's a, that's a mistake that should have been I'll draw that on there so that gives us this acyl benzene compound here that's a really good way of making um, putting a carbonyl group right next to a benzene so that's Friedel Crafts acylation